Hello world, welcome to the 86th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Uh, this is the first video I've uploaded in almost three weeks because I recently just retired from the Air Force and moved from Virginia to Louisiana. And now that I'm in my own house that I own, uh, it's time to start using and implementing Shane into some home automation. And so as such, in today's video, we'll be installing our op this um, program OpenHab onto our Raspberry Pi. So uh, OpenHab, as you could read here, stands for Home Automation Bus, and it's an open source home automation platform. And it, um, you know, instead of using a Google or an Amazon or an Apple service where you download our information, they use it um, for their own purposes. This is something you can do on your own. It has a pretty good community and uh, you can make your own home automation and have full control over the capabilities. So if we want to implement Shane into our home automation, this is the best way to do it. So to follow along, you're going to need a micro SD card. So you'll need 16 to 32 gig bit. If it's larger than 32 gig, then um, the Raspberry Pi can't read it. And so you have to have 32 gig or below. And then uh, OpenHab to install the software called OpenHabian which is kind of a spin-off of the Raspbian, which is the operating, the normal operating system of the Raspberry Pi. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi 2 or greater. And so today we'll be using my Raspberry Pi 4, and it's a 2 gigabit version. And I also recommend that you go through my Raspberry Pi playlist into this because we're going to quickly jump into remote desktop connection and the 70 inch touchscreen display and I will uh, leave links to those in the uh, description. So we're going to be using this quick start instructions from OpenHabian and so uh, they have a pre-packaged OpenHabian SD card image file, so we're going to download that first. Okay, so we're going to be uh, using this 32 gigabyte because it says right here 64 bit vision is for testing only, do not use in production. So let's download that to our desktop. It's 304 megabytes. Okay, now that that's downloaded, we will exit out of that. And then it says, write the image to your SD card with Etcher. So we will open this in a new tab. So this is called Balina Etcher. And what it does is it um, flashes images to SD cards in USB drives. So this was kind of a complicated process until stuff like this came out. So you download that there. We already have ours downloaded. Okay, so the first thing it does is say select the image. So what you do, so we downloaded ours straight to downloads. So we're going to open that. Select the target. Okay, so unfortunately I'll be unable to show you how this works because it's not uh, reading the SD card on my laptop. So I had to do it on my desktop. But basically you select the image here then well we could do that part together then it's going to ask you to select the target you need your removable drive so make sure your sd card is connected you may have to get an sd reader or an adapter like this and then you just press flash and it will unmount it and once you see that you can take it out of your desktop and now the image is stored on an sd card so i just wanted to go through one more thing is uh, some troubleshooting notes. If you can't find this, like you see now, where it says the most recent thing, you have to unclick assets. So that's where you'll find the two most uh, current uh, files. So remember, read the notes. It says do not use the 64-bit version. So we use the 32-bit version. 
Okay, so now that we have that on the SD card, the next step is to insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi, connect to the Ethernet, and power on. Um, if you're familiar with editing the prepackaged codes, you can do the Wi Fi. You're going to have to go into this dot config, uncomment, and add these right here your SSID and your password. But I'm just going to do it using the uh, Ethernet. So let's connect that all up. Okay, so first we're going to connect our Ethernet cable to our the laptop we're using. Connect that to our Raspberry Pi. Then we are going to insert the SD card. Be careful because I have uh, busted this from pressing it too hard. Okay, and then the last step is to plug in the power cable. All right, now it says wait approximately 15 to 45 minutes for Open Habian to do its magic. You can check the progress in your web browser. Enjoy. So let's click it here. Okay, so when I it says you could check the progress in your web browser here. So for me, it doesn't work with Chrome. I think it has to do with my LAN settings. So if we uh, open it using Microsoft Edge, you can see here that this is your OpenHab installation status and it updates every 10 seconds. So uh, I'll pause it here and then when it is complete, the installation status, we will come back. Okay, we are back and I installed the OpenHabian when we did right this step right here, but instead of pressing pause, I pressed stop. So I was gonna do a quick time lapse and time it, but it installed correctly. And, uh, but one note, I realized that I plugged my Raspberry Pi into my laptop, which is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. And so, uh, for me, the quickest way was to plug my Raspberry Pi directly into my router so it creates an Ethernet connection. And uh, I think the it only took about 15 minutes to install. So um, next, we can go to the OpenHab2 dashboard. But first, I'm going to uh, look at these interfaces real quick. And what it's going to give us is the option to set up different interfaces. So the first one is the standard package, which is the um, recommended setup. And you are given four different options. So the first one is this home builder, then a paper UI, a basic UI, and then a HAB panel. And so um, the simple UI, and you can read about each one um, here as you go down. And there's uh, advanced, there's a demo package. And so if you go to the basic UI, and so it says that you can create your own uh, information. Then there's a classic UI, which was the original web, but they recommend that uh, it is the most stable how, and the most widely used. However, the look and feel does not match standards anymore. So uh, the modern standards, so if you're going to try to show it off to your friends who have Ring or something like that, then this one's not going to look. You know what I mean? This is still nice in my mind, but the basic UI is more modern here. Okay. So I would like to install the basic UI. So we are going to uh, do a standard install. So what we did was we connected right here, the OpenHab 8080. 
and we're going to press standard. Okay, so now we're here, and I'm actually going to install the HAB panel because I have a 7 inch touch screen. Uh, please make sure to watch the video when that comes up. Uh, the link will be in the description. So let's go HAB panel. And then it says, Welcome to HAB panel. Click or tap here to begin. And you can create your own dashboard. All right, so we're going to stop the video there. And now we're successfully installed. And so when I log in for now on, I will just go directly to this um, HAB panel and we will create our own dashboard from there. All right. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see me um, continue this project as we implement Shane into our home automation using OpenHAB. Um, in the future one videos, we're going to be building this dashboard and installing maybe some cameras and some Bluetooth speakers. So um, please subscribe, like this video, uh, leave a comment if you have a YouTube channel where you've already implemented a bunch of open hab so my audience can watch it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye world.